So now in this video we're going to take a quick look at a uh, practice circuit that I made here with the uh, 74 HC14. Um, so that's a 7400 series integrated circuit and I actually got it out of this kit here. I'm, you know, I got more uh, elsewhere of this particular integrated circuit. Um, but I recommend getting uh, these assorted kits. Right now you want the high speed uh, CMOS right there uh, version. So it says HC. So you can see all these have HC after them. They all start with 74. The number afterwards is the circuitry that's in it. So last video we did the uh, quad NAND gate. There's four. Uh, we did the quad and gate two videos ago. Now we're looking at uh, 14 there, which is uh, six, so hex. And then there's Schmidt trigger, so the output is uh, a lot more stable than it was uh, in the last two videos. Uh, inverters there, because we're using a, a slowly changing voltage right there. So we will uh, zoom in, and uh, we got the trim pot here. And right now the trim pot is well above the halfway mark. So there's actually not a specific voltage, but you can see I go a low enough in voltage. Now we have a high output. That's to the negative supply. So the positive supply has to be uh, coming out right there. And um, how well you get uh, the positive and negative voltage directly to the supply voltage depends on the transistors in the integrated circuit. So that's something to be aware of. Um, it gets a little worse when you power load. I took some multimeter measurements before this. So in any case, now we're low enough for a high output. That's pretty straightforward. But uh, watch, um, I went a little too quick. I'm going to go down slowly till the red LED lights up. We did not jump this far. There you can see the red LED suddenly came on at this point. And uh, so it's almost pointing to that corner right there. Um, if not actually pointing to the corner. Now I have to go up to uh, that point there before the blue LED lit up. So we got this wiggle room right there. If I go low enough, now it's high with the wiggle room there. Now I go high enough, the output goes low with this wiggle, wiggle room there. That middle ground wiggle room is called hysteresis. The output can be in either state. That prevents you from getting like halfway and like a slightly jittery uh, voltage bouncing up now just slightly will not keep uh, changing the output. Um, you have to go a little extra away and then you get, uh, wrong way, you get a solid change. So uh, focusing on the uh, schematic diagram that I drew here, we have a, a triangle there. Without the dot, that would be a buffer. So um, Schmidt trigger buffer would be, you know, high enough voltage in, you would have a high uh, voltage out, as high as the output can go. Red LED would light up with a low enough uh, voltage, you'd have low and uh, thus, uh, the output would be connected ground as good as it could be, but we have this dot here. So that dot is an inversion and um, So I don't know you could think that coming through and then getting you know twisted halfway uh, being the opposite, but uh, in any case uh, a is the uh, input Y is the output we use number three there usually uh, you got the uh, part number um, It wouldn't be in the symbol because uh, you're kind of cramping space probably above or below uh, so you should see 74 HC 14 here, but I either forgot to draw it or just didn't uh, do so Because um, you don't have to use that component You could use any inverter as long as you understand how well the output will uh, perform, but uh, in any case We have uh, this little symbol there. That's the uh, Schmidt trigger symbol there I don't know uh, what the name is for it, but you can see uh, you can think of it if you're down low And you're raising the voltage you gotta get to a certain point uh, before the output will jump into uh, the other state um, but then you got to go uh, lower to uh, make your way back before it will jump back down. So you can kind of see the Schmidt trigger effect there. And um, that uh, lets you know the output's going to be in one state or the other. And there's going to be a little middle ground region um, where it could uh, be either one of them, whichever it was last put into. So again, we're inverting. So a high input close enough to five volts there, you get a low output where the output is uh, connected ground as good as it can do. And then a low input right there with this true table is a high uh, output right there, as close to five volts as it can go. So I wrote a little bit more there. Um, according to the data sheet, um, recommended uh, two to six volts. Um, so a lot of these integrated circuits are uh, you know, really meant for being used with five volts. And uh, I think some of them do not go down to two volts. You know, it's uh, like four and a half to five and a half volts or something, I believe. Um, but in any case, 
here, you know, um, we're still close to 5 volts for the maximum, but you can get a little bit low, it looks like, on that one. Um, each one of these outputs can provide about 25 milliamps of current. We saw that with the uh, AND gate and the NAND gate in earlier uh, videos. Um, but that's a single output, whereas the entire integrated circuit you want to keep uh, current limited to no more than 50 milliamps of current. So if you're using all six of these, you had all six of these sourcing and sinking current at the same time, you'd want to go less than 10 milliamps with each of them because uh, 10 milliamps each would be 60, so you'd have to go even lower than that. Uh, you know, um, you know, you should probably stay like closer to five to be safe. Um, but yeah, that's uh, what the data sheet maximum, 50 milliamps total. So one of them, you got 25. Uh, you could use two of them, just fine. That'll keep you below 50 because you're gonna stay below uh, 25. But any more than that, you gotta start cutting back how much each uh, is uh, providing current, either sinking or sourcing. Um, so yeah, that's uh, really about it. We have a 10K trim pot. So just a quick uh, review if you're unfamiliar with trim pots. You got the supply voltage across uh, both ends there for this particular one. Um, some of them, the resistive element might be those two pins and then off to the side, you have the wiper. But here we have the resistive element coming to uh, both of the uh, end pins there, going to the supply. They're just little metal pins. I like uh, these ones, they fit into the breadboard. Uh, really easy there. And uh, so you get a fraction of that voltage out, but it's going through resistance. So you can't have it draw current and stuff. And the input doesn't draw current, it just looks at the voltage. And coming back to uh, the drawing, you can see 10K there, that's a 10,000 ohm trim pot that I'm using. Um, that's a common value in kits and stuff and works uh, well. You don't wanna go too low in value, that waste uh, current. Maybe even the component would overheat. Um, and uh, the inputs don't let current in or out, they just look at the voltage. Otherwise that would throw off the voltage. Um, 10K um, can usually easily handle that. Even 100K would probably work just fine um, with this. But I think uh, everybody does 10K because they come in kits and stuff. And of course the blue LED is brighter than the red LED at the same current. So we're dropping current to about a fourth of uh, the current 1000 ohm resistor versus uh, 220 for the red LED because red LED just needs a little more current to uh, get bright. We'll zoom back and you can see it's like somewhere around like 12 milliamps of current there. And uh, sorry about this mess down there. And uh, with the blue LED, there you go. It's like four milliamps, three, four milliamps of current, probably, probably really close to uh, four. And then that might be almost 13 there. Um, this isn't as accurate as the multimeter though. Um, but in uh, any case, that's really about uh, it for uh, the circuit. So hope you enjoy. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.